UFC Vegas 44. These are the full card predictions and the betting breakdown. Smash that like button. Let's get at least 205 likes on this full card breakdown. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, turn the post notifications on. Keep it locked in here at MMA Experts. Let's start it off. First fight of the night women's strawweight division. Mallory Martin versus Cheyenne Vlismas. No longer Cheyenne Bays. Now, I do think. That Cheyenne Vlismas is going to win this fight. Stylistically speaking, Mallory Martin, Thai style of striker, some decent forward pressure, um, solid overhand punches, can mix it up when she's close. Also, not bad with her clinch grappling, and when she is on top, has some decent ground and pound. Now, not a bad submission game herself, but two UFC losses by submission worth noting. On the opposite side, Cheyenne, pressure striker. Um, she does fight fairly well inside. And what I like about her is she'll also mix in that body attack with the hands. Her kicks are pretty good too. Got a big knockout in the last one against Gloria DePaula, which was just crazy. Like a minute in, lands the head kick as DePaula's getting up. Now, she's also pretty strong in the clinch. And I'd say her grappling game overall is solid. I feel like she's just a bit better than Mallory Martin. I don't see either girl as like superb elite level, at least not at this point, both young, 26, 27. I think Cheyenne Vlismas wins by a decision here in a fairly competitive fight. Now, looking at the betting lines for this one, Cheyenne Vlismas, if we can find it here, minus 175. Mallory Martin plus 164. They had her still as Cheyenne Bays over here. So obviously favorite status for Cheyenne. I think Cheyenne does win. Hard fight decision. Next fight of the night. Light heavyweights. Felipe Linz. Azamat Murzakhanov. I like Azamat here. Felipe Linz dropping down after a fairly successful heavyweight career outside of the UFC. 0-2 in the UFC so far. I get why he wants to move down and try his hand at a new weight class. They're giving him a savage 10-0 Azamat Murzankanov. He's a southpaw with a good kickboxing style. He moves really well for as big as he is. He's a thick guy. I mean, he's not a tall, uh, light heavyweight, but he's thick, and he's got a big back, and he's strong. His kickboxing skill set's high level. He closes distance fairly well, and I'd say he is versatile, though, with his attack because he also has a solid wrestling base to mix in. Now, Felipe Lins has some real advantages on paper here. He's taller by four inches. He brings a seven-inch reach advantage. How's his weight cut going to affect him? He was knocked out in his last fight at, light, at heavyweight, and now he drops to light heavyweight. Felipe's a decent striker. He's fairly light on his feet and moves a lot. Ground game is definitely not shabby. Striking exchanges, I think he could get hurt here. Osmot gets the win. I do think he can knock him out in the second round. But looking at the lines for this fight, maybe a bit too wide for a debuting guy. Minus 214, plus 206. I think Philippe Linz deserves a little more respect than that on the lines. Because, I mean, this is a former PFL champion. I could see it being closer right now wide and Azamat unproven but I think he's good and I do think he'll get a victory here in the second round KO over Felipe Linz the next fight of the night Maki Pitolo Dushko Tudorovic I like Dushko in this matchup Maki Pitolo three fight losing streak he's not a bad fighter I mean he had decent moments against Julian Marquez was controlling him in, on the ground in the last one um, unfortunately was submitted towards the very end there He's an athletic southpaw, striking, he'll explode. And I mean, he's southpaw, but he switches stances. Now, watch out from that southpaw stance. He does have some nice head kicks. Um, he's physically a strong kid, and he's athletic. I think that against Dushko, though, he's going to struggle a bit because Dushko, pretty pressure-heavy striker with a solid boxing game, bit of loopy punches, but definitely some power behind them. I expect a lot of forward pressure here. Now, record-wise, 13-8, and 10-2 and two obviously looks severely favorable toward Dushko. But I don't think this is necessarily an easy fight. I feel like uh, Maki Pitolo's a decent enough middleweight. Obviously, three-fight losing streak isn't good, but he doesn't go out there and look terrible each and every fight. I think he's a good challenge for the unproven Dushko Todorovic, who's riding a two-fight losing streak. 
I'll pick Dushko, win by a decision here. I expect some wrestling exchanges. I think Dushko gets a better of him. Striking, I think his boxing is better. I feel like he beats Maki Pitolo over the course of the three rounds. Win by decision for Dushko Tudorovic. Minus 157, plus 147. I'm liking Dushko, the favorite in this fight, to get it done by a decision. Next one, Alex Morono versus Mickey Gall. This is a fun fight. I like Alex Morono here. I think he can ravage through Mickey Gall, to be completely honest with you guys. I mean, you look at Morono. He's an aggressive striker, light on his feet. He has like a very modified Thai style. He holds his high guard up, and he also stands fairly tall. Explodes into range well. Massive hooks. Not a bad grappling game either. On the opposite side, Mickey Gall, excellent Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I mean, he's really good there, I guess I'll say. I don't want to push it to excellent, but he's really good with his jiu-jitsu skill set. Is showing an improving stand-up game. His boxing's not bad. There's certain things to like. His kicks from range are solid. He's a tall kid, 6'2", versus 5'11". He also brings a 2-inch reach advantage. But Alex Morono should be able to pulverize him inside. Mickey Gall still stands a bit stiff, and there's going to be openings. Morono's going to catch him, land big shots on those openings. I think he hurts Mickey Gall. I think he puts Mickey Gall down in the second round. KO, TKO for Alex Morono over Mickey. Now, looking at the betting lines for this fight. Minus 210, plus 194. So, strong favorite status so far for Alex Morono, who I do really believe gets it done against Mickey. The next bout, Clay Guida, Leonardo Santos. I like Leonardo here. Um, Clay Guida does bring in a tricky wrestling game. I mean, he's an OG vet of fighting at this point. He's been around forever. Super aggressive when he's inside. He's going to be tricky to deal with in the clinch. I mean, he's aggressive. He's strong. He's chaotic. Clay Guida is who he is. And at this point, I think there's a proven way to beat him for Leonardo, which would be fight smart on the feet, keeping the hands up, clinching up, working towards trips. I think that there's potential he could get one. I think Santos win by a decision here is a pretty realistic outcome, but you got a 39-year-old and a 40-year-old, 41 and nearly 40 years old for Clay. Wouldn't bet on this one, but I am going Leonardo Santos for the win. Looking at the lines here. Minus 175, plus 165. Can the OG Clay Guida somehow come through? There's definitely a chance. But I I like Leonardo Santos' chances here. I think that he's going to beat Clay Guida. And I think he will do so by a decision. Next fight of the night. This is an actual kind of intriguing like OG prospect still because Jake Matthews is so young and he's been in the game for a while versus a guy that got to the UFC late it's Jake Matthews Jeremiah Wells I like Jeremiah's chances in this fight because he is an absolute powerhouse I'm picking him to win you look at Jake Matthews game fairly well-rounded uh decent boxing Takedown game is good against lesser wrestling level opposition. Jeremiah Wells, by no means, is an elite level wrestler, but he's extremely physically strong. He's super powerful and explosive. I'd call him an absolute powerhouse of a fighter. You look at that fight um, that he fought in his UFC debut against Worley Alves. He's able to go stop takedowns from a very high level grappler, beat him up on the feet. Granted, there were some moments he was taken down and... Obviously, Jake Matthews is going to come in with the game plan knowing Jeremiah Wells starts fast. I still think there's a serious power differential. If Wells lands one big shot, it could be the night. I do feel like he'll touch the chin of Matthews, hurt him, and put him down. I'm going Jeremiah Wells wins by knockout. I think he's going to sleep Jake here. Looking at the betting odds for this one. Jeremiah Wells, plus 169. Jake Matthews, minus 181. I'm going with the underdog, Jeremiah Wills. And I do think Wells gets the KO. Next fight, bantamweight division. Luis Smoka versus Vince Morales. I like Vince Morales here. Luis Smoka, pretty light-footed striker. Good kickboxing game. Um, he closes distance fairly well, mixes it up with his kicks really good. I mean, his kicks are pretty smooth. I will give him honest credit on that. 
Solid grappling, good submission game. Looking the opposite, though, the man who I think is going to win the fight, Vince Morales. you got a skilled kickboxer who controls the center really well. Um, he's got good straight rights, which he is going to look for here against Luis Smoka. Good wrestling base, underrated wrestling base. He was a state champ wrestler. Um, and I do feel like in this fight, keeping it on the feet, mixing it up with hands and kicks on Luis Smoka, I think Morales maybe has a slight speed edge. I think he gets the win by decision. I feel like he could beat Luis in this spot. It's an extremely competitive fight, and the lines do reflect that. It's not a superb widespread. You got minus 135 Smoka, plus 125 Morales. I'm going with the underdog, Vince Morales. I think he gets a win over Luis, win by decision in this fight here. Let's keep on moving up. Zalgas Zumalgov versus Menel Cape, flyweight division. I like Manel here. If he can stop the takedown, he wins the fight. Zalgas, okay stand-up game, uh, will attack the body, but his goal is going to be coming inside, making you think striking, shooting low, and getting you to the floor. On the opposite side, Manel Cape, southpaw with stance switches, super athletic, fast hands. Got a big win against Ode Osborne in the last one, the flying knee, but that's not all he has. He's also pretty technical, too. Can put good pressure and patient pressure too on his opponents, controlling the range, pushing them near the cage, and unloading combinations and doing good work. I think he'll have the better moments here. I think that you're going to see him land clean shots, fend off takedowns. I won't be shocked if he is taken down a couple of times, but I don't think it's uh, enough to change the di the direction of this fight. I think Manal Cape win by decision over Zalgas Zumalgov in this fight here. Cape. The odds for him, minus 195, plus 175. I'm going Manel Cape for the W here. Keep on moving up. The next one, Jimmy Crew, Jamal Hill. I'm excited to see what happens between these two light heavyweights. I feel like Jimmy Crew's going to go out there and get it done. Jamal Hill, just four months ago, has his arm disgustingly dislocated against Paul Craig. He decides now to jump back in there against a guy who actually submitted Paul Craig. Not that MMA math works, but a tricky grappler in Jimmy Crute. Not going to be an easy fight for Jamal. On the feet, Jamal Hill is good from range. Got solid kickboxing. He's really athletic. He's quick on his feet. He closes distance at a good speed. Watch out for his straight shots. And also, I mean, he does fight out of the southpaw stance, which could potentially pose some threat standing up uh, for his opponent, Jimmy Crute. Crute's pretty well-rounded. He showed an approved stand-up game. Granted, against Anthony Smith, he was getting touched up a bit, and obviously his leg gives out on him. This is not Anthony Smith. I feel like Jimmy Crute can get Jamal Hill to the floor. I think he's got the better wrestling. I think the jiu-jitsu game is clearly better. I'm thinking submission in the first or second round for Jimmy Crute. I'm leaning towards the second, really. Uh, there's going to be moments. Early Jamal Hill, if Jimmy Crute cannot get a hold of him from the start, he'll get going, and I do think he'll land some clean strikes. He's got a reach advantage um, of about five inches here, which is solid and, and will be to the favor of Jamal Hill. I think he's going to use it. But J Jimmy Crute getting it to the floor, takedowns, control from the top, and looking towards submissions. Submission round one or two. Jimmy Crute, I feel like he gets it done in this spot. Now, looking at the lines here. Minus 175 plus 161. I like the favorite. I like Jimmy Crute. And I do think he wins by submission as well. Fun light heavyweight fight between two prospects. Two real prospects. Next one. Claudio Puedes versus Chris Grutzmacher. I like Grutzmacher. I think Grits can get it done once again. Um, he's fighting a guy a bit taller in Puyas, but Puyas doesn't really have that, that hard punching power where I feel like he really could hurt Grutzmacher. And you know, Grutzmacher's style, style is going to be forward pressure. He's going to be coming inside. He's going to throw straight punches. He's going to be willing to eat a few to land some. Puyas is a southpaw. He does have a decent wrestling game too, but I don't think it's anything uh, Grutzmacher can't handle I think Grits gets it done. Huffa Garcia, he was able to beat, and he ate some big shots by Huffa. I don't see Puyas with that type of power at all here. I think Grootsmacher walks him down, makes the fight ugly and dirty, and wins a hard-fought and gritty decision. I'm going with Chris Grits Grootsmacher. Looking at the odds, pretty much pick'ems. Minus 115, plus 105 for Puyas. I got Grootsmacher win by decision. 
which would be a scrappy fight. Now, main card, Brendan Allen versus Chris Curtis. And if you guys haven't yet, smash that like button too. Now, in this matchup, I like Brendan Allen. Luke win for Chris Curtis in his debut, and I'm not going to try to shaft him for it, but I mean, how often would that happen between him and Phil Hawes? Hawes was destroying him, then gets caught by a big overhand, down goes the fight. Brendan Allen won't get caught by that same shot. He's long, he's rangy, 6'2". I feel like he's able to outstrike Chris Curtis here. He showed improved stand-up, and eight shots from Punale Soriano, who's known as a real heavy hitter in the middleweight division. Let's not forget, Chris Curtis is more naturally a welterweight Sticking around that middleweight because of some good success and short notice opportunities. I think Brendan Allen uh, is going to be a lot to deal with too in the clinch. I think he'll look for takedowns from there. He's really a solid prospect overall. And I'm seeing improvements every time Brendan Allen fights. I expect him to win. I think he will get Chris Curtis to the floor and I think he'll submit him. I'm liking second round submission. Brendan Allen potentially rear naked choke here. Uh, standing up, I think he'll use that to work his way inside. Get some takedowns. Get on top and work for the victory. Brendan Allen, I don't think the action man, Chris Curtis, has another big knockout coming. I would be absolutely shocked to see it again. I think Brendan Allen beats him for sure here. Minus 330, plus 294. If Chris Curtis can somehow pull two big upsets off in a row like that, absolute bonkers, but I do not believe it happens. I got Brendan Allen, and I do think he wins by submission. The next one, Alonzo Menfield. William, Nightmare Knight. Fun matchmaking between light heavyweights. I like Alonzo Menfield. And I don't think he should stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with William Knight and go too crazy. I feel like work towards clinching Knight up, looking for trips. You go to that Dao Un Jung fight. If you can get top position on William Knight, you can control. You can work towards you know beating him by decision. I don't see um, William Knight as a chinny guy. He eats good shots. Only knockout loss, if you go back, it was a weird stoppage against Tefan Chukwi outside of the UFC. Alonzo Menfield's stand-up game is good. He's got some power in his rear hand. He throws really awkward punches. He has like this slapping hammer fist rear punch. It's an odd shot. Both guys are powerhouses, and this makes the fight a lot of fun. Um, if you look at Knight, he does this awkward thing where you throw straights at him, and he like leans back. But it actually tends to bait opponents in. I mean, you look at that Fabio Charant fight. He caught him with a nice left hook, not even closed fist. It was more the side of the hand here. And he puts down Fabio Charant in one shot. If Knight touches the chin of Menfield, it could be over. I just feel as though Menfield, more experience against top-level guys, works towards a win here. And I do think decision, a smart game plan is needed. I think William Knight will be there for three with Menfield getting the better of him, win by decision, Alonzo Menfield looking at the odds. The minus 150, plus 150. Good lines. And I like Menfield the favorite here. And I think he wins. Decision. Got to be a smart game plan though. Don't go too crazy on William Knight and get yourself caught. I don't think he will. Alonzo Menfield for the W. Now the co-main event is Rafael Fiziev versus Brad Riddell ridiculous matchmaking in the best of ways. I am excited. Rafael Fiziev and Brad Riddell both are tremendous strikers. I'll tell you out the gate who I have winning. I'm going Brad Riddell. I think he gets a hard-fought win. And the reason being, I think he closes fights better and he has more so of a wrestling threat. It's crazy, right? Both and at Tiger Muay Thai, both fighting out of Thailand, though Brad Riddell training Normally with that city kickboxing team. And it does show all those guys at city kickboxing. It's like a similar flair. You look at Adesanya, um, Dan Hooker. They all kind of have a, a flow to them. Riddell is really talented on the feet. I mean, this guy was 59 and 10 in kickboxing. And he's fighting a guy opposite him who meets the accolades. Muay Thai, 29 and 4. Hafael Fiziev. Both guys extremely dangerous standing up. Solid straight punches from Riddell. Massive hooks from Fiziev. Explosiveness. Advantage Fiziev. Technical skill set and range management, I think advantage Riddell. But obviously Fiziev is technical as well. The clinch is going to be interesting because Fiziev having more so the Muay Thai background will be strong there. But Riddell has proven, in my opinion, better wrestling and mixed martial arts. I think that we're going to see a Brad Riddell decision. Might even be a split. Watch for how this fight goes. I think the first round, Fiziev wins. Second round, 
is going to be where the tide needs to turn. I think Riddell can take the second, and then he can also take the third. Fiziev gets a little tired towards the end, especially if he's working in a fight that's really competitive, and I think this will be. I can't wait to see it. We'll see what happens. High-level matchmaking, prospects versus prospects, really with contendership implications. The winner will make a nice jump. 10-1, and 10-1. and one. These guys both in the top 15. Super exciting. I got Brad Riddell decision. Potentially split decision. Now, looking at the lines. Riddell, minus 103. Fiziev, minus 107. This is a pick'ems. May the best man win. And I think that man's going to be Brad Riddell. But I wouldn't be shocked if it went the other way. Great matchmaking. Great matchmaking. Now the main event of the evening. Rob Font versus Jose Aldo. Smash that like button and subscribe if you guys have not yet. Let's talk about this sweet fight. I gotta pick out the gate. Rob Font. I do think he gets it done. But it's not easy to get it done against Jose Aldo. I think this is a close fight. And it's going to be, I think, like a two rounds to three type situation. Rob Font. Excellent jab. Fights well from the longer range. Does bring in an inch of height and an inch and a half of reach, but not significant. Jose Aldo, better lateral movement and more explosive. But I think Rob Font, the way he works his jab, will kind of be able to counteract the explosiveness advantage of Jose Aldo. Throwing strikes, Aldo puts more into them. Rob Font can pepper that jab out there all day. But he has a sniper rear hand that he'll throw straight. If it lands, it could hurt Jose Aldo. Don't think there's a stoppage on either side. I think both elite level tools on the feet. We're going three, I believe. Or excuse me, we're going five, I believe, here with the winner. I think taking three. Other attributes to like about Jose Aldo. Obviously, the improved boxing game. He started training with the uh, Marine Corps boxing team. Obviously, he's deadly to the body. His low kicks off the charts. Extremely patient. Can't be too patient against Rob Font, though. The range edge, I think, is the difference maker. Watch out too, Rob Font has a nasty rear uppercut when you close distance on him. I don't believe this fight will be fought on the floor. I'd be surprised to see a lot of grappling by either guy. This is a true striker's delight. Hard fought decision, Rob Font, extremely close. I think the odds could be pick'ems. Right now it's Font minus 137, Aldo plus 135. I'd like to see the odds closer than that because I think this is a hell of a fight. Going with Rob Font. But I think Aldo's here for sure. Um, but I think the jab is the ultimate difference maker. And that leads Rob Font to victory against Jose Aldo. Overall, we have a great card coming back to us after the week off of fights, unfortunately. I'm excited. Smash that like button, guys. Let's get at least 205 likes. New to the channel, subscribe. Keep it locked in. We got a lot of content coming out covering this card, so keep your eyes tuned on the channel. Turn on those post notifications so you do not miss a video. Much love to all my supporters. I really appreciate each and every one of you. I will see you all in the next video. Peace, guys.